Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today I want to spend a little bit of time talking about privacy web browsers. And this is an important discussion because uh, one of the things I mentioned in a recent video is I use a variety of different web browsers and that's important. And somebody actually sent me an email about that. We're going to cover that in a video uh, later on this week, how I do that. But before we get into there, we do want to talk about privacy web browsers because some browsers are better than others in terms of privacy. And so I wanted to look around and do a little bit of research so we can bring the best information we have in 2023, almost into 2024, talking about which privacy web browsers are the best, why, and the functions and features that they provide for us. And so I started doing a little bit of research and I found a site called privacytests.org. And they actually do a variety. It's an independent project by a guy named Arthur Addison, uh, Adelstein, I think. And uh, he put together this project and then he started analyzing web browsers on a variety of different things. And it's a very comprehensive site. Now, he doesn't look at every single web browser in the world, but he does look at your uh, your most popular ones. We have Google Chrome, we have Edge, we have Safari, we have Vivaldi, Opera, we have Tor, we have on Google Chromium, he has Firefox, Molvad, LibreWolf, um, uh, Brave, and there might be one or two other ones on there as well. Now, as I started looking though at the site, uh, it almost looked like one of those commercials for Brave because it's like until you got near the bottom, it's like Brave as charts everything and other things are failing. I'm like, is this, is this sponsored by Brave? He did start the project independently and then afterwards he became an employee of Brave, but the website, according to him, still operates completely independent of the Brave project. But he does work on Brave to harden it and so it turns out being a lot better in several areas. Um, so I'm not sure exactly where I want to put Brave in my level. Let's assume his tests are well and we'll rank it pretty high, but I'm actually going to put something a little bit higher than that. We will talk about that. But as a good old top five video, I'm going to resurrect my old top five uh, assets here. And uh, we'll go ahead and use those and kind of talk about the top five web browsers for privacy in 2023 and into 2024. So let's go with number five, Waterfox. Now Waterfox is the only one of the browsers that is not on this list. He didn't specifically analyze it. I almost wish that he would so that we can actually get some data about Waterfox in focus of everything else. Now I almost put Firefox as the fifth spot because in reality Firefox can do nearly everything he mentions. You just have to go in there and do a lot of toggling and hardening and policy adjustments. I have videos about the uh, the the hardening of Firefox, you can refer to those. We'll probably do another one here, probably in the next six months or so, as a few things in Firefox have changed. Although the last guide, which was 2022, is still very accurate information, and we talk about Firefox policies and things. Waterfox, the reason I included it in the list is because it does do a lot of the disabling of all of the trackers. We're dealing with privacy here. It disables all of the trackers and things that Firefox tries to turn on or give you an opt out of. Waterfox disables that. Now it's in the last spot because it is. it did survive some of its life fairly compromised. It is a single project by a single person who takes Firefox hardens it and releases it. The problem is there was a period of time it was purchased by System 1. System 1 is a company with a worse privacy policy than any other company I've ever seen. They specifically state, we're going to we're going to buy data about you to augment your policy that is specifically inside their privacy policy. Now, Start page we'll mention briefly has an affiliation with them, which I completely disagree with, but they're not owned by them. That is a big misnomer. We'll say it again. They are not owned by them. System One has made an investment in them. Mostly System One is the organization that runs the ads that appear on Start page. Waterfox, however, was 
purchased by them, leading a lot of people like myself to say, let's get off of Water Fox because it is compromised. Now, it has since uh, earlier this year gone independent again. And so it is now, I'm going to say, safe until we find evidence to the contrary. So I do hope that privacytests.org will start examining it because I think it could be a variable, uh, a good asset into the world. Number four is the Malvad browser. This is a brand new browser on the scene and this is why we put it lower on the list. It is not yet completely tested, it is not yet completely proven. However, it is put together by Malvad, which is a very high trusted VPN company and the Tor browser bundle, which we're gonna talk about in the future here. And on the, uh, on the Malvad browser, it does a ton of things to block fingerprinting, block your screen detection. It blocks a lot of the, the browsers. It does have some built-in functions for Malvad if you have a subscription with them, but you do not have to use it with Malvad VPN. Now, with that being said, what it does do is it does something very similar as the Tor browser bundle, which we're gonna talk about, is it tries to make everybody using the Malvad browser look the same, which adds itself a better level of anonymity that other browsers do not have the capability of doing outside of our number one pick. We will talk about that later. But it does do a lot of things to harden things. It is based on Firefox, and it is a team and a partnership between two very well-resourced and very trusted groups. And because of that, it ranks fairly high, and even on the privacytest.org, it ranks very, very well, compatible with Brave on their various privacy tests. As I said, I only put it in number four because it is so new, it is not yet fully tested. Number three, LibreWolf, another Firefox fork. So if you're paying attention so far, Waterfox is based on Firefox. Malvat is based on Firefox. LibreWolf is based on Firefox. Maybe Firefox is the better option. <laughs> okay. Uh, but LibreWolf, it does effectively the same things that Malvat does. It doesn't do as good of a job of making sure everybody looks like the same person. I would say that's really the only thing out of the box. But like Waterfox and Malvat, it disables all tracking by default. It does some extra things to try and prevent any extra data from coming out. Uh, Malvad does enable the, the uh, screen resolution anti-fingerprinting by default. LibreWolf has it as an option, but not, does not disable it by default. So that's an extra option you have if you want to go in and work with that a little bit better. And so with that, LibreWolf is a lot more tested. It is available. Uh, it's a lot wider availability. Another reason why it's higher than Malvad is this is now available as a flat pack. But if you remember, I always talk about LibreWolf when it was just a binary file, so you'd have to download and, and manually install. It has come a long way. It has become very trusted. It has become very well used. I am using LibreWolf on several of my computers when I need a good uh, anti-cookie or, or anti-fingerprinting browser that I don't really care if I'm on ClearNet, but overall LibreWolf is a very, very good browser if you're looking to consider privacy. It does have a few of the downsides is that it disables your, your uh, internet content DRMs. And so some people will report it doesn't work as well for watching content, but some of the basics like YouTube, it still works. Uh, but if you're trying to do like high resolution Netflix, it may not, at least by default. I don't know. You'd have to look into that. I think having a Netflix subscription is a silly idea. Uh, watch our Jellyfin article, guys. Uh, so with that, uh, LibreWolf is number three. Let's move on to number two. Number two is the Brave Browser. This does rank quote unquote the best on privacy or uh, privacytests.org. So it is a very good browser. It is something that does a lot to it. They also have two other features that, uh, that are interesting, although somewhat controversial. The first is the VPN. Of course, on Windows, it was caught installing the VPN software silently that people didn't ask for. Uh, although Brave did say, well, it's there, it's just not enabled unless you purchase a subscription. So these are subscription add-ons for a VPN. I didn't specifically consider VPN with the privacy elements because it's 
a VPN is not a guarantee of privacy. Okay, a VPN has been sold and hyped as a privacy thing, and it's not implicitly a privacy tool. It is a tool to get you inside of another network. Can you trust that network more or less than your ISP is a question everybody needs to waive for themselves. But having a built-in VPN, if you do need a VPN of some form or another, it does have an easy function. You need to pay extra for it. The other features, it does have a Tor window capability. So with, Bra with Brave, you can boot up a Tor instance. However, one of the major reasons the Tor, the Tor system works really, really well is anonymity and making everybody look like each other. So if you're using Tor on Brave, it is not nearly as private as using it on Tails, on the Tor browser bundle, or on Hunix uh, slash Cubes, which use the same, uh, both of those are using Hunix for their network, so those look very similar. And so, uh, despite it does have a Tor capability built into Brave, it is not the best way to use Tor. I would not even recommend using Tor on the Brave browser because there's too many other moving parts. You want Tor isolated on its own system where it has better control and you can let the Tor system do its own thing with anonymity based on blending you into the users in the background. So this does bring us to our number one. Number one, if you have not guessed it already, is the Tor Browser Bundle. Now it does come with a huge downside that when you're using the Tor network, number one, you cannot be logging into your Google accounts or YouTube accounts or Microsoft accounts or email accounts or any other account that is tied to you, you will have immediately de-anonymized you. These are not designed to use to say, I'm going to log in, I'm going to use Tor and then log into Facebook defeats the purpose <laughs> okay <laughs> completely defeats the purpose um, but if you need to jump on the internet do something without logging into an account you want to look up that weird new foot fungus that has developed you want to look up uh, you know some other information you don't want tied or tracked back then the tor browser bundle is your best bet to go short of using cubes hunix or tails as far as I want a browser on my main computer where I can very privately get on the internet, the Tor browser bundle is going to be the best. Now it does come with a second function is it can be slower. It doesn't necessarily have to be slower, it can be slower. And the reason I say it can be slower is you will get entry and exit nodes that are fast, you'll get some that are slow. Tor works by routing your network through three layers of traffic. There's three separate servers involved in the transmitting of the data in addition to the server's uh, server time and your internet connection. Three other servers are involved. If any one of those are three, are, are, uh, any one of those three are slow, it is going to slow your system down. And so for that reason, you do need to make sure that uh, you're not doing high throughput, high data with things on that browser bundle. It might slow you down quite a bit. But it is, if you're looking for the absolute best, I want the ultimate privacy uh, without installing or utilizing a separate operating system, the Tor Browser Bundle is going to be your best guess. Just do not log into anything. You will have completely defeat, defied the purpose of it. I would say the best general use is probably Brave from the privacy with LibreWolf and Malvad coming really, really close behind it. So it depends. Do you want a Chrome-based browser or do you want a Firefox-based browser? Browser. I prefer the Firefox based browsers, which by the way, the Tor browser bundle is Firefox based. I prefer those, so I'm more inclined to use Mulvad or LibreWolf. I am not as inclined to use Brave, uh, but I do use Brave for elements of my daily workload. And again, we will have a video later on this week. Maybe I'll do another nice outdoor video like this and I'll talk to you about why I use different web browsers for different purposes and delve a little bit deeper on that. As somebody sent me an email, I think that would be a great video. So uh, with that, hopefully that has been helpful. Of course, if you wanna get yourself a nice little alien hat there, you can go ahead and have a look at the, the uh, website there at shop.switchtolinux.com. You can pick up anything like this hoodie I'm wearing as a Switch to Linux hoodie and uh, hats, coffee cups, uh, computer um, mouse pads, things like that. So have a look over there, shop dot switch to linux dot com thanks for watching and i hope that you enjoy switching to linux thank you for watching this video from switched to linux 
This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.